How's it going guys? It is 2.34 a.m. the 6th of December Tuesday here in Japan and we have a past level to medium difficulty question for Parkinson disease for step one as well as step two okay for the IM component. Not going to be a lengthy clip we'll just hop to uh, the high yield points here you need to know. Before we get started please subscribe to my channel I really appreciate it. Give the video a like I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical mehl man underscore medical the links down below. Find me on telegram. The links to the telegram group and channel are down below now start the clip. So 50 year old man with Parkinson's disease. Uh, he also has a long-standing history of depression managed with sertraline and question just wants to know what's contraindicated uh, in this case okay probably the easiest question stem you can have okay one or two liner so let's just whip through the answer choices here choice a amantadine wrong fucking answer uh, this is going to increase presynaptic release of dopamine okay that's what it does you need to know the mechanism of action and you could also be aware somewhat tangentially slash peripherally that it can also be used for influenza A in theory, okay? Yieldness through the fucking floor for both Parkinson disease as well as influenza. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, benzotropine, wrong answer, albeit this is a, an important drug for USMLA, okay? This is an anti-muscarinic. It blocks muscarinic receptors. And I say it's an important drug because it could be used for cogwheel rigidity in Parkinson's disease, but its higher yield use case is for the treatment is for the treatment of acute dystonia, secondary to antipsychotic use. Okay, so patients who get E.G. torticollis, stiff neck following an antipsychotic, if a patient gets rigidity without fever. Okay, if you get rigidity with fever, sure, that's neuroleptic malignant syndrome. That's going to be dantrolene, totally different. Antipsychotic use, D2 antagonist, plus rigidity, no fever, that's acute dystonia. You're going to give an anti-muscarinic to treat that. And benztropine is first line. Now, if it's not listed, okay, you get a question, as I just fucking said, and benztropine's not there, well, diphenhydramine, first generation H1 blocker, uh, can be used to treat acute dystonia. Super high yield, made lots of clips here on the audio cue bank on this stuff, but first generation H1 blockers have nasty anticholinergic side effects, which are actually a good thing if you want to treat uh, acute dystonia. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, carbidopa, levodopa, wrong answer. So you want to know the reason why you pair these two. Okay, so patients who have deficiency of CNS, dopamine, and Parkinson's disease, we don't inject them with dopamine because dopamine has cardiovascular effects if we do that. Okay, we don't want to inject dopamine directly. So we want to give levodopa, which will cross the blood brain barrier. Okay, and also dopamine can be broken down peripherally, but levodopa can cross the blood brain barrier, be converted to dopamine in the CNS. If we inject levodopa on its own, though, without the carbidopa, we're just going to have breakdown of levodopa peripherally, okay? There's an enzyme called catecholomethyltransferase. You don't have to worry about it, okay? It's a bunch of nonsense now that we have a pass-fail step one in particular. All you need to know is that carbidopa will be targeted by breakdown enzymes instead of levodopa. You could think of it as a competitive inhibitor, Okay although that terminology isn't strictly used, but that's essentially what it is, is it is broken down instead of levodopa, okay? And levodopa can cross the blood barrier and be used for uh, Parkinson's disease. You should also know that this pairing, levodopa-carbidopa, can cause acute psychosis, interestingly, okay? They like this on the psych forms for 2CK in particular. So they'll tell you a dude is on carbidopa, levodopa, and then uh, for Parkinson's disease, clearly, and then they'll say his dose was recently increased, and now he's got hallucinations. And they'll say, like, what do you need to do in this case? Discontinuing is wrong. Okay, you're just going to reduce the dose of the carbidopa levodopa. So uh, acute psychosis, if the dose given is too high, it's a high yield point for 2CK, but you don't have to discontinue. You're just going to reduce the dose in that case. It's on one of the psych forms. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, primapexel, wrong answer. So this is a D2 receptor agonist. So this could be used for, for Parkinson, sure, but I mean, it's not uh, the answer here. Primapexel, pergolide, 
uh, ropinirole, uh, bromocryptine. These are all D2 agonists, okay? You don't have to obsess over their specific use cases. Bromocryptine happens to be the one that shows up on USMLE for um, prolactinoma treatment, okay? So D2 agonism inhibits prolactin. Uh, ropinirole, pranipexil, they're the ones that tend to float around for restless leg syndrome. Okay, you know, you get some students get hysterical that gabapentin could be used or a D2 agonist first line now for restless leg syndrome. I'm just making a point in general that when would you see these agents, okay? Uh, pergolide, I don't really think I've seen that one on NBME content. It's more just a theoretical, okay, if we want to be fancy and discuss the names of these drugs here. Wrong fucking answer. Tricyceledulene, correct answer. This is a monamine oxidase of B inhibitor. So it's going to prevent the breakdown of neurotransmitters, serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. But in theory, it has more of a selective effect to prevent the breakdown of dopamine, which is why it can be used in Parkinson's disease. And you say, well, why is it the answer here? Okay, well, if, you if you're on an SSRI already, sertraline in this case, you risk get getting a serotonin syndrome. Okay, so patients who are on SSRIs, you don't want to give monoamine oxidase inhibitors. That's a known contraindication, okay? The, so serotonin syndrome, patients are going to get tachycardia, flushing, diarrhea, okay? So it's a drug react, high, high fever. It's a drug reaction. And classic uh, instance is when you give a monoamine oxidase inhibitor too soon, in the setting of having recently discontinued an SSRI for depression, okay? So let's say the sertraline's not, let's say the patient doesn't have Parkinson's disease and we, we, we discontinue an SSRI he or she is on and then let's say a few weeks later we start a monoamine oxidase inhibitor alone and patient gets serotonin syndrome, okay? They want you to know that you have to wait several weeks uh, if a patient's on uh, an SSRI already, okay? So this is the reason uh, monamine oxidase inhibition contraindicated in the setting of a patient who's on an SSRI already. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.